Wow. Welcome to my country, everyone. There's so much to share about Kenya. And I don't know where to start, from the beautiful coastline of, on the Indian Ocean, to our savannah, to the Great Rift Valley, to wildlife species and awesome safaris. Kenya plays a very important role as one of the leaders in the conservation field. And that's why tonight I'll try and focus more on the conservation field and some of the places that Olive Seed Kenya work. Olive Seed Kenya is located in the Mara ecosystem. And as we all know, the Masai Mara ecosystem is one of the rich and amazing place for wildlife. And it's home to the over 25% of Kenya's wildlife from over 90 mammal species to one, more than 470 different species of birds. Many of the world's most endangered and iconic species live here, from lions to cheetahs to Maasai giraffes. This also sits the eighth wonder of the world. Can you imagine the great, great wildlife migration? So you've seen, which happens from July to, to October each year, where over a million animals, mostly wild beasts, travel from Serengeti to Mara and back. Such a wonder to just see. I hope one day all of you will have an opportunity to go and visit Kenya and get to experience that. It's because of this, we have some of the initiatives and projects that are undergoing around that area because most wildlife, about 70% of wildlife live outside the protected area. And keeping this larger ecosystem intact, open, safe, is one of the key uh, objectives or goals for Olive Seed Kenya. Because the survival of this wildlife population and the peaceful coexistence, it's dependent on us, young people and different stakeholders to work in collaboration to ensure their healthy coexistence. Before I, introduce the, uh, before I introduce you all to the head of operations of Olive Seed Kenya, I wanna share a video about the planting project along the Ta Talek River that the team in Kenya did. Enjoy. meet Amos Kipin, director of Oli Seed Kenya. Amos, a strong native Maasai and lifelong naturalist who leads olive seed operations in Kenya uh, in conservation efforts and other initiatives, including our main projects at Mara Girls Leadership School. We are grateful to Amos for sharing his perspective on why it's important to restore our heart. I would like to share a short film the team in Kenya made showcasing their project, Amara Discovery Center, and types of trees before bringing in Amos to explain some of the restoration project they're doing. So enjoy the video of the Amara Discovery Center. Welcome to Amara Discovery and Community Empowerment Center. My name is Amos. Uh, we are located in Aichong uh, in Mara North, uh, a conservancy. Uh, our project is right here in the middle of the community and we are preparing the part of the earthquake. 
as we prepare to be part of the Earth Day, I'd like to show you some of our green projects that we are doing here uh, in preparation and also that we have been going on, that has been going on here for many years. So welcome as I take you to see our tree nursery. So welcome, this is our tree nursery operation site. Uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have a nursery here. These are some of the tools that our young uh, students are taking, are using in preparing for the tree potting and all that. And we have different species that we are growing. We have the African olive tree, Ole Africana. We have, uh, we have uh, the grow, uh, Croton megalocarpus. We have other trees here, uh, like the, this is what is actually called the arrowroot poison. This is the kind of the, the tree that people can boil their roots and make poison and they were very, very much uh, famous with handers. But right now, it gives actually very good medicine and also gives out very good shade. We have the gardenia. Gardenia is a, a rare tree uh, that is sometimes not growing anymore, uh, but actually we are trying to recover some of these lost species. Uh, we have other species like the, the Kenya green hat. Uh, right here, we have the Kenya green hat, the, the elephant, we call it the elephant pepper tree. And we also have the Lucina. Lucina, these are all the species of Lucina. We have the K apple right there. We have the croton, uh, orange leaf croton, which are also very uh, much famous. And they are actually, these are the most revered uh, trees or, or shrubs for, for lions. Lions like taking shade in those kind of species. We have the acacias, acacia trees. These are very common species. This is the river acacia. And uh, these are some of the trees that we are growing here and we are educating and lighting our community to continue growing them. When you look around this compound, all these trees here were not here before. They have all been planted. And this is a demonstration site where our students come from the community to learn forestry and to learn about climate change and adaptation. So we are working all around the clock to ensure even our waste disposal, when you look at that end there, we are doing the waste disposal and we have a waste depot where all the camps and lodges are coming here to deposit their, their waste, their, their recyclable product, and we take them to Nairobi for management. This uh, program has been running here for the last 10 years, and we are teaching our young people to continue to have that empathy to the environment, continue taking care of the environment. And we believe this is the future. This is actually the future where we are preparing our young people to have a healthy future. Thank you very much. This photo was taken just a couple of meters, kilometers from the planting site. And you can see beautiful elephants um, going about their day. And one thing I also wanted to share is about human wildlife conflict, uh, which is one of the major threats to our wildlife. And we are grateful to the, some of the work that Amos and his team are doing to restore the habitat and promote peaceful coexistence in the ecosystem, because we believe when there's a healthy ecosystem, the, then there will be a peaceful um, uh, coexistence. And from listening to Amos this evening, one thing is clear, uh, that together we have the power to restore our earth and the smallest changes makes the largest impact. So our healthy planet is not an, op an option. It's necessary and it's time to act now. So for every young person out there, all our partners listening, this is the best time to collaborate and work together towards making our world a better place. Ladies and gentlemen, young people are no longer leaders of tomorrow, but leaders of today and the generation of light. It's up to us to create these avenues and opportunities for them to take charge and act now in making our world that we are living a better place. I will now uh, hand over to Bob, who is in Morocco, to tell us more. 